at 9-1. and one. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman and Len Elmore with you. And a lot of people are focusing on Maryland and Terrence Morris, and those are certainly some very worthy things to focus on. But what does Maryland have to do? What are they worried about when it comes to North Carolina State? Well, one of the things that we heard today was the fact that North Carolina State's a great offensive rebounding team. They've got some quick, strong guys inside. And this is going to come down to a battle on the glass. State averages about 15 offensive rebounds a game, and it's essential to their offense, especially when they're not shooting the ball well. And I'll show you the starting lineups tonight, beginning with the visiting Terps, coached by Gary Williams. A very young group, three sophomores, a freshman, and a potential All-American as a junior, Terrence Morris. But Morris right now is playing some fairly quiet basketball, passing up shots, getting teammates involved. They'd like him to be a little bit more assertive. For North Carolina State, with Herb Sendek in charge, his fourth year in the program, Anthony Grundy in the backcourt leads the ACC in steals and actually Juan Dixon for Maryland is second and those two might be matched up on one another. Herb Sendek has taken this program Len, to the NIT each of the last three years because of health and depth and recruiting in this new building and a lot of reasons the expectations are a lot higher right now. They're hoping for an NCAA bid for the Wolfpack this year. Always high expectations when you're talking about a Maryland. And Maryland has done a number on the Wolfpack the last few years. They have won nine of the last ten in this head-to-head -head matchup. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how this young Maryland team responds. This is the first game this season on an opponent's floor. And you've got some young guys at key positions. Steve Blake at the point. If this crowd gets into it, it'll be interesting to see if he has any points. Maryland to the first possession of the game. And a turnover. And out on the run come the Wolfpack. And the lay-in is missed. And then it is jammed back in by Inge off Ganey's missed layup. Well, Terrence Morris is going to attract an awful lot of defenders wherever he is, but certainly down on the post, it's a lot easier to double him, and that's what State did to create that turnover. Kenny Inch, who has returned from a knee injury, returns to the starting lineup, effective tonight. Lonnie Baxter bulls his way in and travels. Two possessions, two turnovers for the Terps. Well, again, you take a look at the two players right there, Inch with the steal on Terrence Morris, and out in transition. North Carolina State's got a couple of pretty good guards themselves and, and Justin Ganey and Anthony Grundy. These guys will get out and run when given the opportunity. There's the pressure from Maryland. See how State handles that. This is Damian Wilkins, the son of Gerald, the nephew of Dominique. Grundy misses a three. Thornton keeps it alive, but it's Maryland a ball. Again, Maryland's got to exercise a little bit of poise right now and recognize the defense. Nice job there by Miller, or Blake, I'm sorry, on the broken floor situation. you got to be able to see what the defense has given you and then take advantage. One of a number of very talented freshman point guards around the country this year. Blake ties the game. Wilkins will take the three, this time baseline. You know, you watch Damian Wilkins play. He plays with an air of confidence. He's strong. He puts the ball on the floor with that confidence, and it seems as though he knows how to play. He's not a tentative freshman. There he is, and he hits a long two for Wilkins. Like I said, <laughs> not a tentative <laughs> freshman. He's averaging just about 10 points and seven rebounds per game, the most highly thought of recruit in Herb Sendek's era at NC State. Jump hook by Morris, no good. A little bit too unselfish by Juan Dixon. He had the shot, passed it up, and Morris was in a bit of trouble. Dixon not shooting well at all lately. Inside look, and Inge is fouled on his way up to the basket. Again, he penetrated very easily. Well, we talked about Damian Wilkins, and you take a look here. He recognizes where the defense is. He's, he's got an ability to put it on the floor and get to his spot. And again, no hesitation. Comes from a great family. Been dealing with basketball just about all his life. So, you know, he shouldn't have any type of barriers in, in determining exactly what he needs to do out on the floor. At the line, Kenny Inge. Suffered a knee injury back in late November. A partial tear of the MCL in his left knee. He's got a brace on right now. They expected him to be out five or six weeks. He was back in three. No surgery, just some rest. One of two for Inge. Offensive rebound, Thornton. And now Blake. Again, we talked about offensive rebounding being the key. That was the first one for NC State. Miller misses the three. And Inge has been strong on the glass. NC State with some big bodies out there. And the thing about those big bodies is the fact that they're quick. These guys have quick feet. Wilkins, Inge, and Thornton. They will get to their spots on the offensive glass. Thornton has it blocked by Baxter. Now Dixon leads the Terps. Three on a three. He'll slow it down. 
Good job, good recognition by Juan Dixon. We talked about that before. You got to survey the defense. State looks to try to take Terrence Morris out of the game. So back it up and find out exactly what they're giving you because you have to give up something if you're going to double and triple team a play. Brick wants Baxter inside. Instead, it's Morris outside, well off on his three. And a Maryland ice cold early. 5 2 Wolfpack. Wolfpack in the conference opener for both teams. All the way to the basket it goes Ganey has to give it up and it's out of bounds to Maryland. Give the Maryland defense credit. Ganey on a couple of possessions before was able to walk right into the lane and create a situation that got them to the free throw line. That time the defense collapsed and Ganey had nowhere to go. Coming down on this end Dan though the idea now is Morris has to get touches but he shouldn't feel compelled to shoot particularly from as far out as he did last time. The touch will shift the defense. Baxter can't handle a tough pass from Dixon, but it remains Maryland ball with 18 on the shot clock. And another turnover. Dixon tried to lead Morris, but led him too far. Thornton will take the three. Got it! Well, the Wolfpack on their home floor playing with confidence. Not often do you see Damon Thornton pull up from three range. Just his second made three-pointer this season. And it's a six-point lead, North Carolina State. As Len mentioned earlier, this is Maryland's first game all year on an opponent's court. The majority of their games, home games, some neutral side games, so this is the first time they've played in this kind of an environment. Wilkins with a jumper well off. And Morris has the rebound. Maryland doing a nice job of blocking off on the boards and limiting State to one shot and out. The problem is the shot that they've been getting is usually a good one. Baxter says he was held. But the ball's off his arm out of bounds. Another turnover. The fourth committed by Maryland. State's got two early threes and a six-point lead. Which sports center do you watch? Now at 6 p.m. only on ESPN. You can rationalize it all you want, but eventually you're going to get caught. There's a tan minivan in the parking lot with its lights on. Whoever owns the tan minivan, your lights are on. Okay, you're busted. It's time to check out the redesigned Mitsubishi Montero Sport. It's only the family car when the family's in it. Responsible. Yeah, excellent. Hey, which color? Smog or dirt? Oh, you're on your own then. 1 800 collect. Save a buck or two. Wolf pack up early, leading Maryland by six in a game. One of the double header tonight. It begins with the ACC and continues with a Big Ten here on ESPN2. Scooney Penn and number 18 Ohio State are in Champaign to take on number 17 Illinois. That game follows us tonight. Here on ESPN2, and what a great matchup when it should be in the backcourt. We saw Penn have it, Michael Redd and Corey Bradford. Oh, absolutely. Corey Bradford, one of the best three-point shooters in the country. I mean, he lights it up from way downtown, and Michael Redd scores from just about anywhere. Those guys will be guarding each other, at least watching each other put it in the basket. Three changes for North Carolina State out of the timeout. And as missing the jumper is Grundy. Into the game and out. Marshall Williams, a 6'4 freshman. At the other end, a jumper from the corner will go for Dixon. It's a two, and Maryland makes it an 8-4 game. 
Right now on that shot, that was the fifth field goal attempt for Maryland. That's as many turnovers as they've had. Five shots, five turnovers. And they desperately need Dixon to start shooting the ball well. Mike Martisich into the game for Maryland. We mentioned Marshall Williams in for North Carolina State. Archie Miller and Ron Kelly are in as well. That'll be a fresh 35 on the kickball. Maryland now looking to play solid half-court defense. You know, they'll put on the token pressure as they did the three-quarter pressure, but they're going to drop back and try to stay in front of people. And once again, limit State to one shot and out. Good position inside for Inge. Forces his way through the double team. And this is the shot. Dixon's got the rebound. For a guy 6'3 and 150 pounds, Dixon's an incredible rebounder. Better than six a game. Well, you know, it just goes to show you that it's not all about height. It's about positioning, and it's also about desire. And, and Juan Dixon is a tough young man. Turns it over. Grundy hits the floor, has the ball, calls timeout. That will be a full timeout. We'll step aside with the Wolfpack leading Maryland by four. It's a fact. A Whopper has 40 grams of fat. But Subway has seven delicious sandwiches with six grams of fat or less. To burn off those extra grams of fat, you'd have to do 1,785 jumping jacks. Subway. It's the way a sandwich should be. VarsityBooks.com, you'll save up to 40% on textbooks. They may come in handy. VarsityBooks.com, college, life. Let's be honest. There's really no such thing as a gracious winner. You might say things like nice game or shake your opponent's hand. But no matter how humble you are on the outside, deep down on the inside, you're saying, I'm better than you are. The Mitsubishi Galant. Rank the number one family sedan under 20 grand by car and driver. Better than Accord or Camry. Boy, we just love saying that. It's a fact. A Whopper has 40 grams of fat. But Subway has seven delicious sandwiches with six grams of fat or less. To burn off those extra grams of fat, you'd have to do 1,785 jumping jacks. Subway. It's the way a sandwich should be. We are back at the brand spanking new entertainment and sports arena here at Raleigh. The new building for the NC State Wolfpack. They share this with the NHL's Carolina Hurricanes. 19,000 and change the capacity here. And they come pretty close to filling it night after night. Well, Maryland is also on the way to getting a new building for its program. The Comcast Center, which is scheduled to open three years from now. The naming rights just decided yesterday. The artist's rendering of what it's going to look like on the inside. You obviously know the area of the campus. Well, how important is the new building for that program? Well, it's extremely important. First of all, congratulations need to go out to the athletic department in Maryland and ComSat for the partnership. But just as importantly, you know, you can't recruit in this conference unless you're state of the art. And I think that's what Maryland has done right now to try to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. Looks like it's going to be wonderful. I'm a little ambivalent, though. I hope they still keep the tradition of the old Cole Fieldhouse. Long miss by Archie Miller, but it remains North Carolina State ball. That, that's always the tough one. You move into a bigger building, generate more revenue, but you lose some of that intimate atmosphere. You get into a, a more pro-type building. It's a different flavor inside. Well, having had uh, some opportunity to take a look at the design and trying to keep the same sight lines, trying to keep the same ambiance with uh, the jerseys hanging from the rafters and some memories of Cole Fieldhouse, but it'll never be the same. Archie Miller with a beautiful feed inside to Ron Kelly, and the Wolfpack take a six-point lead. Morris backing his way down, finds the cutting Martisich. No basket, the foul's on the floor. And that's exactly what I meant earlier when I said that Terrence Morris is not compelled to shoot it, but his touch will create opportunities for other guys. As soon as he receives down low, look at the triple team. Somebody's open. Martisich does a nice job of getting to the spot where Morris can see him and find him. So Maryland takes it out on the end, and Dixon has to find Blake almost at midcourt. They get out on Dixon in a hurry. Now Morris has good position, but couldn't handle the pass, and it will still be Maryland ball. Out of bounds off Damon Thornton. Herb Sendek asking the defender, you got to get around in front of Terrence Morris. That was a little hand signal. You can't let Terrence Morris get the ball and you play behind him. Morris out of this game right now as Baxter checks back in. Another foul is called, and this one's going against Maryland. I think it's Baxter. 
Teddy Valentine, very decisive in his call, and that's a problem because that is number two on Lonnie Baxter, the starting center for Maryland. Into the game now for Maryland as well, number 11. Calvin McCall, the starting quarterback for the Maryland football team, who just joined the basketball program last month and has played a lot in his two games. Well, he's a tremendous athlete, excellent basketball player down in Orlando, Florida. And he's given them a little bit of strength, a little bit of quickness. Really a three-guard look right now for the Turks. At the other end, pretty good-looking jump hook by Ron Kelly that wouldn't stay down. Here's McCall. Off to Blake, and again the freshman brings it back, listens for instructions, and resets the offense. And look at the pressure applied. Archie Miller right now is not allowing Blake any room to maneuver. Same could be said for McCall. Shot clock under 10. Back in the hands of Blake. And a travel is called on Blake. But you got to credit the NC State defense. Normally it's very difficult for a team to sustain good defensive pressure in the half court eventually they break down and the other team finds at that time for the full period of time they were able to stymie Steve Blake Steve Blake tried to get the ball inside but you know he found that he had some people stepping in front of him and that's just been a problem for him tonight Maryland is a team used to forcing turnovers but tonight they're committing them eight turnovers in seven minutes of play they've made committed eight turnovers they've only attempted five shots well obviously that's a problem with your offense if you can't get the ball to the basket you're going to have difficulty and the Turks have to find a way to score right now and they've turned it over again after a good looking jumper by Grundy excites this crowd even more and it makes it an eight point game the point I was going to make they have to find a way to score that's why Gary Williams put Terrence Morris back in the game almost immediately because he recognizes there's a difficulty here without him on the floor Baxter and his two fouls to the bench oh. Damon Thornton right over Martisic. And Mike Martisic is seven feet tall, and he was standing straight up. Somebody take that trampoline off the floor. <laughs> it's not fair. You never really know what your team is made of until you get into conference play, and Wolfpack fans have to be ecstatic tonight. Well, you take a look right here. Holy man. <laughs> You know, last year and the year before when NC State suffered that rash of injuries, a lot of people wanted to blame it on the shoes. But I'll tell you this, there's something in his shoes right here because Damon Thornton just got up. And you can see from his eyes, he knew what he was going to try to do from half court, and he just exploded right over Martisich. Again, it's a question of playing with confidence. NC State is a team that's flirted with the top 25. They spent a week there before losing to Tulane. But this is a team that's on a mission. They know that they've been held back over the years, the last couple of years, from the NCAA tournament because of the injuries and never having the full complement of players. They think something special is going to happen. Another steal. And here's Grundy. Chased by Blake. The layup won't stay in. Ron Kelly's got it underneath. And a tie-up is called. The ball will remain with the Wolfpack. On the other side, as NC State starts to assert itself, we talked about maintaining poise. You know, we knew NC State was going to attack freshman point guard Stephen Blake. Now Maryland has to maintain some poise. The best way to regain your poise is to make a couple of stops on the defensive end. Herb Sendak substituting almost every whistle as Inge comes back in for Kelly. Dixon in for Blake for Maryland. Grundy left hand as he got free from Nicholas. Grundy with four, and North Carolina State leads 16 to four. And I said, uh-oh, because any basketball fan hates to see a defense give something up straight down the chute. How about any basketball coach? How about another turnover, and then Maryland gets it back. Martisic misses the layup. Morris misses the follow, and then commits the offensive foul. Grundy still down, now slowly getting up. Timeout on the floor, North Carolina State by 12. This year, I will get in touch with my inner athlete. This year, 
There won't be more of me to love. This year, I will make heads turn. Start the millennium right. Join Bally Total Fitness now for no money to start. This is your last chance to get last year's rates. Call 1-800-WORKOUT. Get the equipment, the trainers, the classes for no money to start. This year, I will take several thousand steps in the right direction. Call Bally Total Fitness today. Yaffa blocks. Interlocks. Yaffa blocks. Stacking blocks. Yaffa blocks are like furniture. Better. Interlocking storage blocks. Stack any which way. Stack them right up to the ceiling like two skyscrapers. Snap on a Yaffa closet rod. Wow! wow. An instant closet. Throw your stuff into the Yaffa block drawers. Poof! Your room is spotless. Go Yaffa! Call 1-800-GO-Y-A-F-F-A for your free catalog. I guess you could say I'm always looking for a challenge. So when I heard Old Spice had this high endurance challenge, how can I say no? It's a long lasting, white solid antiperspirant that goes on clear. Look, no flakes. And talk about stopping wetness. I'm out here all day and this stuff really lasts. Guaranteed. We're called 1 800 Prove It and Old Spice will buy you a stick of yours. Ah! Hang on, little buddy. Now you can take a look at the anatomy of a defensive disaster. You see the double team by State on the right side. Watch them pull back. And your first responsibility is to protect the basket. As Inge backs up, Terrence Morris leaves the middle wide open. And you see the cutting Grundy come straight down the gut defensively. And that's enough to make a coach's hair turn gray in the course of a first half. There has been a lot that has to bother Gary Williams here in the first eight minutes or so, mainly the turnovers. Maryland's committed 11 turnovers in just over eight minutes, and North Carolina State has made them pay with layups and easy baskets at the other end. And a quick look at Herb Sendek. This kind of half, you know, he's looking young and fresh. <laughs> Life's a breeze right now. His team is playing very well. Long way to go against a team this good. Wilkins kicks it out. Grundy gets by Dixon, 18 to 4. Grundy with six. And we knew that would be a nice matchup between Dixon and Grundy, both of them the same types of players. At one point, Juan Dixon might have been a better jump shooter, but, you know, he hasn't really been able to connect with consistency this year. But Anthony Grundy has really given NC State a creative guy off the dribble. And on the defensive end, as we mentioned before, it leads the conference in steals. The basket will count for Morris, and he's fouled as well as the All-American candidate finally gets involved offensively. Well, we talk about Terrence Morris and his capabilities. You know, up until this game, over the last three games, he's really only gotten eight field goal attempts per game over the last three games. Here is a situation where he knows he's got to turn it on. You know, Terrence Morris has been accused of being a little bit too unselfish. Well, now is an opportunity for him to let that selfish streak show because his team needs him. Averaging almost 17 points per game and shooting 56% from the field on the season. Those are his first three points of the night. Grundy penetrates, kicks it out. Ganey's jumper won't go. Rebound to Morris. Another thing that he does very well. He's already got four of those tonight. Another turnover, though. The activity of NC State. They get their hands on just about everything they can. They're really stepping up in the passing lanes, making it very difficult. Grundy misses the runner. And now again, Gary Williams trying to get something flowing offensively. Maryland can't even get shots away. Another one as Ganey reaches in, knocks it away from Dixon, and then Dixon returns the favor. I tell you what, though, the activity of NC State on the defensive end has made Maryland a very deliberate team, and I don't know if they're comfortable playing in a deliberate style in the half court. They like to have a couple of passes, run that flex, get the cutters going, and then put the ball up and go get it off the board. Morris back to Dixon. He draws a crowd. And it's still Maryland ball with 14 on the shot clock. Right now, the type of defense that State's playing, Maryland seems to be thinking a little bit too much and playing more east-west, going from side to side as opposed to north-south. McCall comes out. Blake returns for the Terps. And more changes again for North Carolina State. Clifford Crawford has come into the game for the first time. A 6-3 freshman from Winston-Salem. Some folks around the North Carolina State program feels the fastest guy with the ball they've ever seen. Shot clock down to five. And Blake way up top. He might not be aware of it. He wasn't. You can imagine what halftime is going to be like in the Maryland locker room. 
14th turnover. That's just practice, folks, what you just saw there. <laughs> Unbelievable turnover numbers. Kelly muscles his way in, has it blocked, gets it back, still alive. Maryland ball. Crowd thought it was goaltended, it might have been. But that's a good sign for the Terps to have someone active on the defensive board, someone contesting NC State. Maryland 11 and 2 on the season, ranked 15th. Their only losses to Kentucky and George Washington, and they later beat Kentucky in a rematch. Loose ball, Dixon's got it. Got in the air and was very fortunate to find Morris, who was then fouled by Crawford. And Dan, going back to the Maryland win over Kentucky, at the time, a lot of people just kind of brushed it off and said, ah, oh, Kentucky's down this year to a mediocre team. Well, how big is that win now? Five straight wins by the Wildcats. That's right. Tubby Smith has brought them back. North Carolina State, 9-1. Their only loss at Tulane. Their biggest win at Purdue in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. On a Justin Gainey three-pointer with 14 seconds to go. Dixon had the shot altered. Again, Maryland gets it back. And that's one of those kinds of games that you can point to as a watershed for this NC State team. They came back from way back, and they really held Purdue scoreless. Martisich has it blocked. Nothing easy for the Terps, even when they managed to get a shot off. Wilkins inside. Kelly tries to scoop it under, has it blocked. Kelly again. And now Maryland comes back. Very physical under both baskets. Blake, bad idea. Crawford. Wilkins wisely says, let's get set up here. The point I was going to make, uh, talking about the Purdue game, was that NC State has developed a penchant to keep teams scoreless. They've held a number of teams scoreless for five minutes or more over the course of this season, and that's a sign of consistency, particularly on the defensive end. Focus. Crawford is stripped. Morris leading the break. Has Blake, and Blake has it blocked. Kelly got it. Well, the crowd got their striped shirts on today. <laughs> First they thought they saw goaltend, and now they scream because they believe Morris had hooked uh, Damian Wilkins. Dixon over Crawford. Tough shot, won't go. Rebound Kelly. Strong off the bench tonight, but he looks tired right now. State doing a nice job of shutting off the interior passing, forcing Maryland to start looking for those perimeter shots. Wilkins gets his man in the air. State holds the opponents to just 56 points per game, the best of the ACC. And you're right, Dan, this up and down pace, Justin Ganey was sucking wind on that pass. He didn't even have the energy to go after him. Now Wilkins, one of the few players on the Wolfpack side who look fresh right now. Kelly forces it up, rebound Morris. Ron Kelly just looks totally out of sync down there on the, on the blocks. He's got a couple of his shots tipped away, and now he doesn't even have the confidence. He's just throwing it up there. Three subs waiting to come in for State. Morris with a three. And he now has six of Maryland's ten. And that's why you can't count the Terps out. They fall behind by a lot, but they've got a guy who can score in a hurry in Terrence Morris. Again, if he exhibits that selfish streak on the offensive end, he can bring his team back quickly. Gainey trying to lose Blake. Beautiful feed to Kelly. The shot won't go down as Martisich may have gotten a piece of it and then knocked it free. He may have gotten a piece, but he shouldn't have gotten a piece. As we mentioned, Kelly just isn't going to the basket with any authority. With that body, you know, you've got to be able to create some room. He hasn't created any room for himself and really hasn't gone to the basket hard. The Miller's jumper off the back rim. Rebound to Morris. He's all over the glass tonight. And now he's open for another three. Oh, he'll hear about that. <laughs> Under six minutes to play. Ganey has it knocked away from behind and taken away again. And now Martisich, of all people, dribbles it out of there. Blake to Miller. Uncontested. He'll lay it in, draw the foul as well. Slow getting to the spot. Danny Miller with a nice job. Going to the baseline on the reception. Here he is, gets reception, sees the defender closing. And that's the open spot. He goes to the basket hard. 
and that's why he drew the foul. But the bottom line is we think we're seeing a lot of sloppy play, and it, it appears that way, but these guys not only are tired, but they're also playing pretty good defense. We went an extraordinary period of time without a whistle. And at that whistle, both coaches changed four players. It's an 8-0 run right now for Gary Williams in Maryland to get it back within six. Miller at the line. Kind of look like hockey changing <laughs> lines. Wholesale changes, that's right. Another sophomore, McDonald's All-American in high school. Good shooter from outside. It makes it a five-point game. And finally, both teams will get a much-needed timeout to rest. North Carolina State by five. men lose their hair early. No. Thank you. By the time we hit 30, we don't have to invest much in combs. So I started using Rogaine when I was like 28 at the first sign of fallout. Before I looked like I needed it, because I knew I would. So there I am. I've been using Rogaine for about two years now, right at the source of the problem, and I don't see any difference. And that's the idea. You keep the hair you have. Look, I love my dad. I'm just not in a rush to look like him. Simple, safe, smart. Rogaine. It's stronger than heredity. Maryland on a 9-0 run back in it, trailing by five. Don't forget on Saturday, time of the NFL playoffs, and it begins for you with NFL Countdown at 11 in the morning Eastern time on ESPN with Stuart Scott and the gang, and they'll wrap up the games for you on a prime time at 7.30, and the games themselves, of course, on Saturday are on ABC. Rob Johnson expected to start a quarterback for the Bills as they take on the Titans, and then Gus Perron will take on his former team as Detroit visits Washington. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network. Go.com. We'll see if everybody's a little fresher right now after some changes and a timeout. 18 13 Wolfpack. It seemed only a few moments ago I was talking about NC State's defense and how they had the ability to hold people scoreless for long stretches, and it's been them that's been held scoreless. I think Maryland's in the midst of a 9 0 run right now. They are. Inge the miss, and now Blake and the Terps can cut into that lead a little bit more. NC State shot well early, and nothing since. And it's a three-point game as Baxter gets involved. His first two of the night. Well, this new, improved Wolfpack team, we spoke of all the virtues, but the one thing that they have to develop if they're going to be a quality team is the ability to put teams away. And, and obviously, right now, they haven't developed it. And now the charge with an offensive foul. It's like Damon Thornton, perhaps. It is Thornton picking up the foul, his second. It's been their inability to maintain the distance between them and Maryland. A lot of it, unfortunately, has to do with their inability to put the ball in the basket. I think Ron Kelly was the culprit. He had a number of opportunities down low, point blank range, and just couldn't connect. And North Carolina State has struggled to shoot the ball all year. 44% from the field, not terrible, but just 29% from three point range and barely 60% from the line, the worst of the conference. And that's why you can't afford, if you're a Wolfpack, you can't afford to miss those point blank layups because you don't have the thumper for mountain three range to bail you out. Blake the air ball, Baxter the miss. And Wolfpack on the run. This is Grundy. Tough look inside for Inge. Great catch. A travel. Just couldn't hold his balance, but a great catch by Kenny Inge. Grundy with a good look, and there's Inge. The key to that is catching with both hands. All too often you see players trying to grab the ball with one hand in a crowd, and you're not going to be successful. 
Taj Holden into the game for the first time. And now for Maryland, 6'10 freshman out of Little Silver, New Jersey, all state player last year. Morris back on the bench for the Terps right now. Nobody wants to pick up that third foul in the first half. It's been a physical game. There's a mismatch. Archie Miller on Big Taj Holden, and I don't think Blake saw it. Blake instead tried to create his own mismatch by going around a big guy with the shot clock running down. Out front, whenever there's a pick, NC State is switching, and that time Holden set the pick. Miller switched on him, and Holden did the right thing, ran directly to the block where he's got the advantage, but Stephen Blake never really recognized it. Instead, Blake draws the foul on his way to the basket. He'll go to the line. And now Morris will check back in for Baxter after the first free throw. What's your assessment of Blake as a freshman point guard? How's he done? I think he's done quite well considering what he's come into. I mean, you know, replacing Steve Francis is a monumental job, and he's come in here. He's done a nice job of leading this offense, getting the ball where they need to. You take a look at his numbers there. The six assists are what's most important to me. He's distributing the ball very well. And Maryland is right back into this game on a 13-0 run. Hey, girls. Why so glum? And you are? Come in. I'm the 1-800-Collected Vice Guy. Talk to me. Well, we did do some excellent shopping. Manicure, pedicure, two tops and seven colors. And a henna tattoo. So? We're out of town and out of cash. Call Daddy. He'll wire you more. Use 1-800-Collect and save him a buck or two. He'll think you're responsible. Yeah! Excellent! Hey, which color? Smog or dirt? Oh, you're on your own then. 1-800-Collect. Save a buck or two. Hello? Yes. Yes, Larry, I got your facts. And, you know, I had some interesting ideas about that very proposal. I was thinking, uh... Presenting the new Italian Originals Mizza Trio from Domino's. Tender prosciutto, Italian sausage. Tender prosciutto, spicy pepperoni. New Mizza Trio, 1099, 1099, 1099. New Domino's Italian Originals Mizza Trio. Prosciutto ham, Italian sausage, and spicy pepperoni. So much amore delivered hot for only 10.99. NC State's lead is down to one with 3.42 to play in the half. And at the half, we will join ESPN News for a look at other college basketball stories. Utah playing at Louisville and also preview the second game here tonight on ESPN2. Ohio State and Illinois. And no, Herb Sendek's not in trouble. He's still got his job. But on the football side, the Wolfpack have made an announcement. So stick around. For ESPN News for that, Chuck Amato with Florida State for 18 years announced today as the new head football coach at North Carolina State. Rundy at the point right now for NC State. This is Marshall Williams. He's been a force off the bench this year. Archie Miller tosses it away. Drew Nicholas has the loose ball. He's got Blake on the wing and Morris heading to the basket. Maryland can take the lead. Miller penetrates and is called for the offensive foul. Just when I was about to say both teams seem to have settled down a little bit in running their sets in the half-court offense, Archie Miller throws an easy pass away, and Danny Miller from Maryland on the other end forces a shot, especially when they had good movement and good flow. Justin Ganey returns for the Wolfpack. See if that gets something going for them offensively. They have not scored a point in nine minutes. We are talking about how they're used to holding other teams down offensively. They have succumbed to it themselves here tonight. Inch with good position inside. Clean block. Blake the other way, and Morris gives Maryland the lead. He's got eight. And you can mean that literally, Terrence Morris has given them the lead. Not only has he given them a spark on the offensive end, but great plays on the defensive end. That last play there on the block was Terrence Morris. Inch again, good position. High off the glass, no basket, but this time a foul call. And 
the Bronx cheer here in Raleigh. From behind, Terrence Morris, great timing. And then he has the presence of mind to get out in the lane, fill the lane on the break. A nice drop-off pass by Stephen Blake. But that's what superstars are supposed to do, make the big plays. Second foul on Morris to go with two for Baxter, who's out of the game right now. And at the line, Inge. Playing like a stronger fella, and with good reason. He's 20 points up from last year. A lot more physical. Playing a lot more inside. Here are the numbers for one of the best all-around players in the country. And the thing about it is you'd never know because he does it so quietly. It's one of the drawbacks to his game in some respects, but also one of the strengths. The strength is he lets the game come to him. He takes opportunities when they're presented and makes the most of it and doesn't need the gaudy actions to bring attention to himself. It hits both, state by one. The other thing worth mentioning is last year was a very different Maryland team, loaded with veteran players, and at that time, one of the best players in the country. It's Steve Francis, as now Morris is fouled by Grundy, but Morris didn't have to be the number one guy last year. Now he does. Yeah, and it takes a while for someone to adjust mentally to that role, especially when, you know, you're a reserved guy like Terrence Morris. You know, he's the kind of guy that's not going to go out there and, and demonstrate every time he scores a basket. He's not going to dance with the cameras. And I don't know if he's looking to be a highlight every night on SportsCenter. Maybe every once in a while. <laughs> Certainly has the ability. 6'9", just about 205 pounds. Slender guy. At the line for the one and one. Misses the front end, ends the rebound. Well, this is a crucial possession for NC State because I think it would be a psychological blow for them to lose this lead. Well, let's find out. They lost the ball, and with Nicholas missing and then Morris tapping it back in, they've lost the lead again. And Morris already has 10 points and 9 rebounds. It's definitely got to be deflating not only to Herb Sendick but to his team to have gone out and done so well at a 14-point lead and almost with a snap of the finger see that lead evaporate. The byproduct of that crowd noise has pretty much evaporated as well. Again, no call underneath. Wilkins stays with it, and now there's a foul, I believe, on a holding. But it's turning into a real battle underneath that particular basket with not many fouls being called in. Well, Kenny Inge had his legs taken out from under him. He made a nice, quick move right here to the baseline. You see two guys, Miller from behind, and it looked like holding out front. Once again, here's another angle. You take a look at the contact. There's just too much contact not to blow the whistle on that one. But you also saw Inge really go down hard. I mean, this is a guy that suffered. You see the band, the uh, wrap around his left knee. He suffered an awful lot with the medial collateral tear. He's come back strong, but you know, those are the types of things that can send you back to a relapse, and rightly so. He was man. Argument right now over who should be shooting the free throws, I believe. I think State wants it to be Ron Kelly. And I think the officials are trying to say it's Damian Wilkins. Now, neither one of them is Calvin Murphy at the line. And Kelly's 57% and Wilkins is 46%. But the interesting part about it is neither one of them are Kenny Inch. <laughs> and he's the guy that probably got That's hammered. Right. We're going to take a look at the replay and decide who it is. Chuck Walsh, the ever-observant SID for Maryland, right in on the play as well. Gary Williams getting the explanation, actually doing a little more giving than getting right now with Teddy Valentine. And I think the officials probably, and I'm not one to criticize, but I think they probably need an earful from both coaches right now. I think in the effort of letting these guys play, they're letting them play a little bit too much. You take a look there, there's the contact. And Inge really gets no quarter on that. From that look, you couldn't really see who should be shooting the free throws. Wilkins is the guy taking the free throws. And despite being a 46% shooter, he hits the first. Wilkins was clearly gesturing toward Kelly before saying, no, no, he got fouled. Made more changes as both coaches try to get some fresh people in there. One of two for Wilkins, tie game. And we're going to make it clear, they did not call a foul on the play by Inge. Right. The foul was called after right. the ball came down. And we didn't get an opportunity to see that. But the folks at home, we want to make sure that we weren't beating a dead horse. <laughs> Tied at 21, a minute and a half to play, first half. Maryland's done a much better job lately taking care of the ball after turning it over 
14 times in the first nine minutes. And Terrence Morris has done a much better job taking over this game. He's now got 13 points. Kenny Inns better recognize he's getting a little hot over there. Terrence Morris is lighting it up. It is such a tough inside-outside matchup at 6-9. Rundy wants to answer, misses the three. Kept alive and back to the Wolfpack. Now Wilkins. Now Kelly. And another foul is called underneath. And there's a glimpse of that offensive rebounding that NC State needs so badly. But here on the other end, I talked about it getting a little hot over there on that side. Kenny Inns had to fight through an awful lot of picks, but then he relaxes. And you can't relax. Terrence Morris has got unlimited range for a guy his size. And the moment you relax and he receives, that's when he hurts you. Big first half for Morris after the first four or five minutes were very quiet for him. A contact lunch crowd in here for Danny Miller. Yet another delay. Now, this is a tough crowd. It's one thing to boo the officials, but <laughs> let the guy see. Like I said, he should get laced. <laughs> that way he won't have to stop the game. <laughs> Kelly misses the first. He's at the line after grabbing the offensive rebound and getting fouled. Not shooting well, but on the season, 60% of Kelly's rebounds have come at the offensive end. And does, four of the five tonight. Does a nice job of getting possession, but he's got to learn how to finish. And as I mentioned before, with that big body, he's got to be more assertive going to the basket. It was once a 14-point lead for North Carolina State. As Miller hits the three, it's now a five-point lead for Maryland, their largest of the night. And as I said, once State lost that lead, you could see that they were totally deflated right now. Only one or two guys out there, Kenny Inge among them, is really playing with the effort necessary to stay competitive right now. Seven-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock here in the final minute of the half. Conference opener for both teams. Maryland's 11 and 2 overall. North Carolina State 9 and 1. And about that halftime talk you mentioned a few minutes ago, I don't think it's going to be Maryland's <laughs> locker room that's going to be so loud. Grundy will hit and a push out the basket and a foul as well. Well, if you're Maryland, that's exactly what you don't want. You play great defense and then for a split second. You make a mental error with the reach, and it turns into a potential three-point play. Just when you've done so well, there's no reward. And Grundy to the line, 6'2 sophomore out of Louisville, averaging almost 13 points and three steals per game. That field goal by Grundy, the first one for North Carolina State. First field goal for North Carolina State in more than 12 minutes. Walter Williams back in. And, and that was to stop the clock and let NC State have a chance to set up their defense against Maryland's last shot attempt. Five seconds. Blake with the ball. Gets to the foul line. Pull up jumper. And was it touched on the rim? No, say the officials. So it's Maryland leading by two. Gary Williams says, I'm not so sure about that. Came off all right. He's feeling a little bit better about things with the way that Maryland played in the second half of the first half. Take a look, man. Uh, it looked like it came off. I mean, it's hard one, to tell from that angle. Give this one to the Wolfpack in spite of the protest lodged by Gary Williams. But he is happier lately in large part due to the play of Terrence Morris, 13 points in the first half. Maryland was once down to 14. They lead by two at the break. We'll join ESPN News after these messages. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Alta Vista. Smart is beautiful.
VarsityBooks.com, you'll save up to 40% on textbooks. They may come in handy. VarsityBooks.com. College. Life. your facts and you know I had some interesting ideas about that very proposal I was thinking uh... John, are you there? John. <laughs> you're at the half the Terrapins lead the Wolf Pack 27 to 25 NCAA basketball on ESPN 2 Hi, everybody. Welcome to ESPN News. Dave Feldman, along with Andy Katz, ESPN.com senior writer. Kevin Cork will join us shortly. And Andy, let's get some analysis first in the first half because the Wolfpack was up 14-4. to The Terps came roaring back. How'd they do that? Well, by playing up-tempo basketball, which is key for Maryland. And this was a huge game, a huge half for Maryland, coming off really a disappointing effort against George Mason where they only won by three points. These are the kind of games that separate the ACC elite from the rest of the pack. NC State needs to win this kind of home game. If you remember Wake Forest a couple of days ago, lost to Florida State. Those are the kind of games that those middle of the road ACC teams need to separate themselves from Maryland to stay put with Duke and North Carolina. They gotta win this one on the road. For NC State, they gotta protect the home court. All right, Andy, stay with us. Let's talk some other hoops. 22 ranked Utah taking on Louisville. Louisville's been an up and down team all year. The Cards beat North Carolina, but were blown out by Kentucky. Let's waste no time. Show you the highlights of this one. Early on, Nate Johnson driving baseline, and for God's sakes, cut off the baseline. Why don't you? Nate Johnson gives Louisville a 6-2 lead early. This has been a very inconsistent Louisville team, Andy. Well, yeah, Louisville has looked real erratic all year. You know, they got blown out by Kentucky, but then they win at home against North Carolina. And talking to both, co both coaching staffs, Louisville didn't think it would have an answer for Hanno Metala, but in terms of Louisville's offense, they really need Marcus Mabin to get shooting the ball a lot better on the perimeter. Utah does a great job, as you know, matching up against shooters. To look at the number one team in the land, you just have to go to Palo Alto, California. The Stanford Cardinal undefeated, starting with the date with the Arizona schools this week, but they've been undefeated and had problems with Arizona before. Well, I'll tell you, two years ago, if everyone remembers, when Stanford went to the Final Four, they were 18-0 going in against the Arizona schools. Arizona came in on a, uh, on a weekend and actually, and it was actually a Thursday night, beat them at home, beat them really badly. Two days later on a Saturday, Arizona State went in there Beat him in overtime, and let's let me tell you who was on that roster. Eddie House. He played 30 minutes in that, 39 minutes in that game. He's averaging 35 points a game in the last four games since an 0 for 16 game against BYU. All right, in the Big Ten now. And by the way, Quinn Buckner will join us later in the evening for his analysis. He played at Indiana, but what about Ohio State and Illinois? That's a very good matchup. Dave Barnett will call that action, and he previews it right now. This is the Big Ten Conference opener for both the Illini and the Buckeyes, but Illinois already is looking at a magic number of three. How's that? It goes back to last year. They won only three regular season Big Ten games before suddenly exploding in the Big Ten tournament, winning three games in three days against three ranked teams, including Ohio State, to wrap up year three here in Champaign for Lon Kruger. This year, they are picked to be in the top three in the Big Ten. And one reason is they have three McDonald's All-Americas, including a guy they waited all last year for, Frank Williams, a great point guard. And Frank Williams is very exciting. He's, a, he's becoming a better point director, getting the ball to guys like Corey Bradford. And I think it's going to enhance Corey's game. Outside, he's got a wonderful jump shot. Three-point range, 91 shots for 40%. So they're going to find him in their early offense. More importantly, he's got great strength to put it on the floor and get into the lane and dominate a little bit. But it's important that Williams get him involved. Buckeyes hope to get Boban Savovich on the floor. He's missed a month with an Achilles problem. For Illinois, they hope to get Victor Chukudebe back on the floor. He's missed time with an ankle. And Demir Krupalia, likewise, has missed lately with the toe. They hope he's healthy enough to go tonight. Good one to open Big Ten play. Ohio State and Illinois. Back to the studio. 
Dave, thanks. And with Raf there, you hope Ohio State or Illinois open in a minute, man. Nine Eastern time. It's 18 versus 17. How do you size up this Big Ten matchup, Andy? Well, obviously we see Scooney Penn there, but as Dave was saying, it could be the front court. Ken Johnson, look for him to be a big factor tonight in the post. He's got to do more than block shots for the uh, Buckeyes. Ohio State, a couple early losses, and they were predicted to do very well. A team that went to the Final Four last year with Penn and Red. Are they not as good as everyone thought in the preseason? Well, they're not getting the inside play that they need, and Ken Johnson needs to, uh, needs to be much more of a factor in the offense, especially offensively. What we've seen all week this week as the conference play begins, there are no more secrets. There are more, no more tricks. There's no more Mississippi Valley States. There's no more Quinnipiacs. <laughs> this is a time where everyone knows what you can do, especially defensively, and it's going to tighten up a little. That's why we see Notre Dame beat Connecticut. That's why we see Vanderbilt beat Florida. We should see another good match up here with Ohio State and Illinois. All right, Andy, thanks a lot. Andy Katz, as always, with the insight. And if you want to talk to Andy, you can. Log on to Andy's columns, go to ESPN.com, and click onto the men's college basketball homepage, ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. Right now, we'll take a break. We're at the half. Terrence Morris and company lighten it up. Maryland was down 14-4. Now they're up by two. Kevin Cork with the rest of the news and more of the second half when ESPN News and ESPN2 continues. Is uh, Gruber? Can I interest you in some wonderful opportunities in the stock? Ms. Gru Ms. Gruber. It's time for E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. I'm Buzz, and and, uh, and I'm Shirley yeah. Buzzolini. Yeah, and that's Shirley. We're people, people. We switched the autos to State Farm because I was tired of punching numbers. We dial a 1-800 number, hit an asterisk, hit a pound sign, and never did know who we were talking to. They don't have to hit a pound sign to talk to me. When I need to call my agent at State Farm, he knows who I am and I know who he is. I can talk to Gary like a friend. I even insure their golf cart. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Sean fished the sea from dusk till dawn. Leaving his skin tight and drawn, no ordinary soap would do, so he tried the Irish Spring that's new. Unlike some deodorant soaps, new Irish Spring Aloe helps hold more moisture in, so your skin won't feel as tight and dry. Now whenever Sean's ship is in, all the lasses of Inishmore want to touch his skin. New Irish Spring Aloe cleans your skin, keeps moisture in. I'm freezing my ass off. There's the lodge. I'll make him turn. Wait a minute, the angle's too sharp. Don't be a wimp. I know what I'm doing. Dream! Ah! Nice job. Now we're gonna have to call his parents. We'll use 1-800-COLLECT. Save him a buck or two. 1-800-COLLECT. Now you're being logical. Poor baby. Aww. Nice cat. Hi, Mom. <laughs> use your head. 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. Or three. It is halftime at NC State. Wolfpack and the Terps going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Two points separating them right now. Welcome back to ESPN News here on ESPN2. I'm Kevin Cork. I have the distinct honor of getting you caught up on the rest of the day in sports. Major League Baseball has ordered John Rocker to undergo psychological testing. This following his controversial comments published in Sports Illustrated last month. Now, Rocker will meet with doctors before Commissioner Bud Selig decides what punishment, if any, Rocker will face. In other baseball news, former Cy Young winner Doc Gooden signed a minor league contract today with the Houston Astros. Gooden spending the last two seasons with the Cleveland Indians. Switching gears, talk a little football now. Bill Belichick filed a grievance today with the NFL, asking to be released from his contract with the Jets. This, of course, coming just two days after resigning as the head coach of that club, his one-day stint. And we're going to send you back out to the ball game. As you know, you're enjoying the action on ESPN2. Terps and Wolfpack, more action on the deuce. We're back on the news with our top stories next. Working like a dog and not getting anywhere? Feeling stuck, left behind? There's an information technology revolution going on. Do something about it. Call Knowledge Alliance at 1-877-IT4U. Register for a free IT career workshop. You'll get the training and guidance you need to get that high-paying IT job. Call now. Make IT your future.
Golf Digest presents 50 ways to lower your score. To get greater distance, turn your right foot out. For a better backswing, don't slide. Turn your hips instead. Now, lower your score, drive longer, hit straighter, and play your best golf ever with the 50 new stroke-saving tips in every Golf Digest. Call now for your risk-free trial issue. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $19.97. Plus, get this stroke-saving video free. Call 800-417-1200. Got those no folders to wake us up loose. Need that fresh mountain grown taste to start the day. For the blues to start flowing away. Got that good feeling coming on. We're folders hot, steamy, and strong. Oh, yeah. The best part of waking up is folders in your cup. Yeah. Presenting the new Italian Originals Mizza Trio from Domino's. Tender prosciutto. Italian sausage. Tender prosciutto. Spicy pepperoni. New Mizza Trio. 1099, 1099, 1099. New Domino's Italian Originals Mizza Trio. Prosciutto ham, Italian sausage, and spicy pepperoni. So much amore delivered hot for only 1099. Back in Raleigh, Maryland with a two-point lead over North Carolina State at the half after the Terps trailed by many, as many as 14 early in the first half. It was North Carolina State 18 and Maryland 4 at one point, but Maryland has roared back into it. More basketball coming your way. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern out of the Big East, Georgetown and St. John's, and then Connecticut steps out of conference to take on Chris Mim and the Longhorns, number 22 Utah, led by Otto Mentola at San Diego State. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network, go.com. We'll be back with more after this. Shack's having a clearance sale on select compact PCs for your whole family. Incredible clearance prices up to 30% off. Powerful internet-ready compacts loaded with features and software for education. Get an extra $400 off when you sign up for CompuServe internet service. Save up to $700 on a compact that could help your kids do better in school so they'll do better in life. Only at Radio Shack. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. Back in Raleigh, a two-point lead for Maryland. Looks like it might be one of those years in the ACC. Monday night, Florida State overcomes a double-digit deficit to beat Wake. Last night, Duke overcomes a double-digit deficit to beat Virginia in overtime. Now Maryland's down 14. They hold State without a field goal for 12 minutes, and they lead. Is it just going to be that kind of a year? Well, it certainly is. I talked to Herb Sendek today and said, you know, you look at the middle of the pack to judge the strength of the conference. He says there is no middle. 
<laughs> Hard to tell who's top and who's bottom right now. What many feel is the most competitive and maybe top conference in the land. The shooting for North Carolina State is very poor, just 29 percent. The turnover problems for Maryland in the first eight or so minutes were horrendous. But once they started taking care of the ball and started giving it to this guy, things got a lot better. Terrence Morris, 13 points and nine rebounds in the first half. And look at the turnaround after the first eight minutes of the game. And within that period of time, North Carolina State cannot argue the fact that they didn't get shots. They were getting shots right at the basket, but just couldn't put them down. They got the offensive rebounds they needed, but they never converted. One change to start the second half. Mike Martisich will start in place of Lonnie Baxter as Terrence Morris. That's not a change. He hits another one. It's a three. He's got 16, and Maryland leads by five. Well, at this point, 16 points, nine rebounds, considering the tempo of this game, that's, that's a night's work for most guys. And Terrence Morris has been the man from Maryland to lead them back here. Justin Ganey, his first two points of the night. Starting point guard for North Carolina State had a rough first half. No points, one assist, two turnovers in 15 minutes. Well, again, it's going to be important for NC State to come out here psychologically sound and confident after blowing the lead that they had in the first half. You probably think that they're going to be a little bit tentative, but Ganey showed that he's not. Steal and a timeout, just a 30-second timeout. But again, North Carolina State's got to figure out a way to shut down Morris right now. And again, considering the first half that he had, you wouldn't think that he would break that wide open without a defender close to him to receive. He has better than half of Maryland's points tonight, and it's 16 is just about what he averages this year. Well, we mentioned it before. When you're the man, you know, this is what's expected of you. And Terrence Morris was able to not only cut into that deficit, but give Maryland the lead and beat NC State from a number of spots on the floor. He beat him with the three. He beat him posting up, blocks shots, and then gets out in the break. So all facets of his offensive repertoire were shown in the first half and beginning in this half. One other note on Maryland. They have won their last 37 games when leading at the half. And they brought a two-point lead into the second half here tonight. It's three now. Ganey gets screened from Thornton. Now Thornton rolls down into the key. Wilkins started quickly. That was pretty quiet for much of the first half. Now Grundy wants Inch. Tough move. And the putback is good for Thornton. We talked about the offensive rebounding of NC State, how important it is because they don't shoot very well from the field. And if they're going to come back and win this game, they're going to have to hit those boards, and Maryland's going to have to make sure that they don't turn the ball over like they just did. Wilkins looking like a Wilkins on his way to the basket as he lays it in, and North Carolina State regains the lead, and there's Dad. Gerald's still looking like he could play, and boy, Damian looks a lot like Gerald when you see him one after the other. Well, I'll tell you, the one thing Damian brings to the table is that he's a much stronger player underneath. But again, talked about Maryland with the turnovers. If they're going to keep this lead, they're going to have to cut those down. Nice scrambling job by the NC State defense. And then talk about converting on opportunities. NC State back where they started this game. Great anticipation by Grundy, who is the leader in steals in the ACC. Double team on Morris, and Grundy just slides into the key to the guy who's left open, Martisich, and Morris never saw him. Well, you're entitled to one mistake. <laughs> well, I'm praising Grundy more than <laughs> criticizing Morris. No, Grundy did a great job. And the thing about it is Terrence Morris has to hold that ball maybe a little longer to watch the defensive rotation before he commits. Blake guarded by Ganey. Freshman being hounded by a senior. Now Miller way inside, switches to the left hand and lays it in. And Danny Miller has been criticized for being maybe a little soft underneath but that time a nice move and as you said use his body and use his left hand to complete the shot that, that's something that Merrill can certainly need Terrence Morris needs some support here on the offensive end eight for Miller he averages just under nine floating jumper is good for Ganey and State regains the lead there's a the harassment of, of Steve Blake we talked about before State has to do that to try to disrupt the Maryland offense Miller inside again kicks it out to Morris three is short Martisich misses the putback Grundy in traffic Ganey down to Thornton lost the handle got it back 
Missed a short one. Kenny Inch got it back. No foul called, and after three attempts, Maryland comes up with the ball. And again, getting all the offensive rebounds that they want, NC State still unable to convert. Three minutes into the second half, one point a game. Again, Miller getting very good position. Wilkins got a piece. Marvisic missed a two-footer. Well, how many close opportunities have both teams had tonight that they haven't been able to convert? But Dan, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that these guys are rushing the shots up there. They're not gathering themselves and going up strong, squaring their shoulders to the basket. It's almost as though they're afraid to get hit, and, and that's an unfortunate trend in college basketball today. You don't see guys going up there taking the punishment and gaining the reward. Here's Dixon. Quiet night for him. He can really light it up in a hurry when he's on. Morris throws it away again. North Carolina State ball. Again, good defensive rotation by NC State off of the double team of Morris. And Terrence Morris can't be expected to do it all by himself. He's got to get some other people involved in moving the ball. It doesn't have to be one or two passes and then looking for a shot. A steal, and Dixon puts it in. That was a strip right there, pure and simple. Good hands by Juan Dixon. But not quite as acrobatic as his first half dunk. But still a whole lot of fun for the crowd here in Raleigh. If you missed his dunk in the first half, he just soared over Martisic. Offensive foul on Blake. Talked about two good defenders. That's the number one and two guys in the ACC and steals. Dixon says, I don't want to be number two for long. <laughs> And then Damon Thornton, you don't realize how athletic he is, but that move on the baseline, and here's Blake trying to do it himself. Again, has the right idea, trying to help out and support on the offensive end of Terrence Morris, but just the wrong judgment on that side. Rundy took the charge at the other end. Damian Wilkins draws the foul. Danny Miller picks up the foul, his second. You know, another thing, getting back to Thornton, is he's healthy really for the first time in three years. He's had knee problems and groin problems and hip problems and foot problems. He had to redshirt a year. He missed parts of his other two seasons. He's a redshirt junior right now, but feeling as good as he has at North Carolina State. Well, he came into this game hot. He's had two straight double-doubles. He's averaged 14 points and 12 rebounds in those last two games, shooting 15 of 22 from the floor. So he's got the confidence, and you're right. One of the reasons I say you don't think of that type of athleticism when you see Damon Thornton because you haven't had this, the opportunity to see 100% of Damon Thornton. Three years ago as a freshman, he was the runner-up to Ed Cota for ACC Rookie of the Year. It will remain with the Wolfpack, and the lead remains with the Wolfpack. They're up two. team ever well Rebecca football is a complicated sport most women don't understand but I'd have to say Dallas and their gloomy day defense you mean doomsday defense then there's the Pittsburgh satin curtain no, steel curtain whatever at least we both drink Miller like because it tastes great right well actually I like it because it's less filling but it's nice to drink with such a football expert you know I was a guard for the Packers Jimmy you were parking lot security taste the true business are you looking down my shirt can be a pretty tough place. Now there's one exciting car designed to take it. Grand Am. With solid form design, it's the most solid Grand Am ever built. Grand Am. Exciting.
excitement well built by Pontiac. Wolfpack lead by two on their home floor. There is second round action tomorrow night at 7 Eastern on ESPN of the Mercedes Championship. Tiger Woods and 30 other winners from last year are there. David Duvall tries to defend his title. Duffy Waldorf is the first round leader right now in Lahaina. And it's going on over on ESPN even as we speak. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. Four minutes into the second half, North Carolina State at home, up two. The lob for Thornton, and why not? Lonnie Baxter in excellent position, but it looked like his feet were stuck in cement. Thornton got up so quick and so high. 11 for Thornton. He's got three dunks tonight and a three-pointer, which is just his second three-pointer of the season. Drew Nicholas, baseline, and a little bit too much of the baseline. Another turnover, 20th committed by the Terps. You take a look at Lonnie Baxter in red, right under the basket, good position, but man, Thornton just climbed and got that, and Baxter, again, looked as though his feet were stuck, had no place to go. State fans getting a chance to see what a healthy Damon Thornton can do. Grundy gets to the foul line, now gets in trouble, stolen by Miller. Miller's all alone. All the way, and he makes it happen. Ten for Miller above his season average. I'd have to say, I think both teams have shaken the effects of that up and down roller coaster first half. They've gotten down to committed basketball, playing pretty good defense. Ron Kelly, jump hook, rebound Morris, and for Terrence Morris, he's now got a double double. Just his second of the season, and the first one was against Winthrop. Another turnover. Wilkins. Now Ganey, a long three-point attempt. Pretty good ball, move, ball movement by State. Crowd's got some juice again as well, but Lonnie Baxter will take some of that away. Nice feed for Morris to make it happen. And that's the great part about this rivalry. You know, beating Maryland for, for NC State, particularly of late, is a real thrill. So they're going to be in this game emotionally as much as anything else. And the Terps, again, coming down here trying to establish themselves. They're young, they're eager, they're aggressive. And for the most part, they've done a nice job, but for a couple of errors in the first half in the beginning of the game. Shot clock down to eight. I said a couple of errors. This time, 16. <laughs> 16 turnovers in the first half. Wilkins, no, but Kelly on the offensive glass again. And now Morris is all alone. How does that happen? Definitely a communication breakdown, and we see Damon Thornton limping a little bit, grabbing his left ankle. It looks as though he may have twisted that. And just as we talk about Damon Thornton at 100 percent. It's as if there's been a cloud hanging over him ever since he got to North Carolina State. He's had a tremendous game tonight, and hopefully this is just a minor problem for him. And that's how Morris got so open, obviously. And obviously you hate to see that happen to any player. But as you mentioned, a situation where Damon Thornton has finally climbed to the mountaintop and is playing up to the potential everyone predicted. And he's just having a great stretch right here, not only in this game, but in the previous games. And for something like that to happen to him. Here he is right now. You take a look at him. Someone just fell. Lonnie Baxter fell on his leg, and it looks like it twisted as he continued to grab it as he ran off the floor into the training room. Inch replaces him. Ganey hits another three. All ten of Justin Ganey's points have come in the second half. Calvin McCall back into the game for Maryland, replacing Danny Miller. No Blake on the floor right now. Dixon finds Morris. And Morris right now not deferring to anybody. Baxter the rebound. And a foul is called. 
Well, that was just an excellent job by Lonnie Baxter recognizing when Terrence Morris receives that the shot's going up. He made his way to the weak side of the board, actually the right side of the board, since Morris was in the middle, it wasn't really a weak side. But he established position down low. Now look at him on the left side of your screen. He sees the shot going up. Now he's establishing. And he made room for himself with that left hand pushed in way under the basket. And for all you offensive rebounders that want to be great offensive rebounders, you have to establish position. Make room for yourself. Damian Wilkins back into the game for North Carolina State. In job. Baxter got a chance to start last year when Obina Akizi suffered what turned out to be a season-ending Achilles injury. And for the moment he took over, he impressed, he surprised, he improved, and he's gotten even better this year. Well, Maryland's 19 and 4 since Baxter became a starter, so I'd say he's had a pretty heavy impact on the Terrapin fortunes. This game has been a close the entire second half. Another basket for Ganey. He's got a dozen, and again, all of them in the second half. Herb Sendek calls him his rock-solid player. He just comes to play every day, and he's also one of the team leaders, and he's done it. Nicholas turns it over. Talk about leadership right here, recognizing his team has to keep pace with Maryland. Justin Ganey taking it upon himself, shooting threes, and now when they come out to play him for the three, puts it on the floor. And Gary Williams sends Steve Blake back in to defend him, or attempt to defend him. He shakes him with a crossover, gets inside, and has it blocked by Baxter. Nicholas wide open left side. Blake will take the shot instead. It's a long two for Stephen Blake. Back within a four. Only time in the last ten meetings between these two teams that North Carolina State won was in the 1997 ACC tournament when State was an eight seed and beat Maryland on their way to surprising everybody and making it all the way to the championship game. And they did it with the small lineup, spread the floor. CC Harrison took over. Morris stole it and stepped out of bounds to turn it back over. 11-19 to play. Maryland's down four. It's a fact. A Whopper has 40 grams of fat. But Subway has seven delicious sandwiches with six grams of fat or less. To burn off those extra grams of fat, you'd have to do 1,785 jumping jacks. Subway. It's the way a sandwich should be. When it comes to traditional luxury, it's anything but more of the same. Yeah! Introducing the all-new 2000 Bonneville. Screaming with attitude you'd never expect in a luxury sports sedan. More luxury. More attitude. The all-new 2000 Bonneville. By Pontiac. organize your life sale might not get rid of the monsters under your kid's bed, but it can put them in their place. Ace is a place for the helpful hardware folks. Radio Shack's having a clearance sale on select compact PCs for your whole family. Incredible clearance prices up to 30% off. Powerful internet-ready compacts loaded with features and software for education. Get an extra $400 off when you sign up for CompuServe Internet Service. Save up to $700 on a compact that could help your kids do better in school so they'll do better in life. Only at Radio Shack. We've got a cheesehead here in Raleigh to try to root on the Wolfpack. They lead by four over Maryland, 11-19 to play. More hoop coming your way Monday. Big Monday gets going. Presented as always by Bud Light. Under the Big East first, Georgetown against St. John's. Red Storm, not big, but man, are they fast. Connecticut will try to bounce back from a loss to Notre Dame as they take on a Chris Mim in Texas. And then Utah ranked 22nd against San Diego State at midnight Eastern. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. Archie Miller in at the point right now for North Carolina State. Ganey gets a rest after the huge second half that he's had. Miller redshirted last season, medical redshirt after back surgery. He hits Grundy, and Grundy hits the front rim. Thornton almost had the putback. Instead, he'll shoot a couple. 
Guess the Wolfpack fans are very happy Damon Thornton back on the floor. You can see his left ankle has been taped up. And here he doesn't have seem to have suffered any ill effects. Again, a good offensive rebound that sets inside and then makes room for himself. And McCall with the reach in, but the important thing in making room for himself is his arms were spread, so he had an opportunity to leave his feet. Ankle looks okay. Thornton at the line. Miller back in for McCall. Just McCall's third game since joining the team after spending the year as the starting quarterback of the football team. And a very good night for Damon Thornton. State led by as many as 14 in the first half. Maryland led by two at the break. Comes Morris trying to run Thornton around, and he did just that. Drew the foul as well. I mean, does he make it look easy or what? He comes off the pick. He receives and pretty much in such a smooth motion. Take a look at him. Use the pick. Rub shoulders and back to the way you should. Just one bounce straight to the hoop. Switches to the left hand. And a little bit of emotion there. Which is something you don't see a lot from him. That's right. Another look from the ground angle. And again, he does a nice job of freeing himself because he rubs himself off the pick. The defender's got no place to go. This is the free throw. He's still got 20 on the night, and it's a three-point game. Thornton over Baxter. Too strong. And Grundy knocked it out of bounds. Still Maryland ball. Not only is there a lot of optimism here for Herb Sendek's program this year, but next year they have already signed three of the top recruits in the state. Thornton with a block on Baxter and then a tie-up. I mean, is he playing tonight or what? You talk about getting off your feet. Mars with a nice feed to Baxter. And then Thornton comes in out of nowhere. Does a nice job of tying up the ball as well. But again, great timing on the block. That was as clean as you want to be on a block dunk. And that was going to be a dunk. Quite a matchup between Baxter and Thornton at both ends of the floor right now. Thornton wants to take Baxter out away from the basket a little bit. Maybe put the ball on the floor. And three or four feet beyond the three-point arc. That's not a place where Lonnie Baxter needs to play. And there's Baxter chopping at Thornton and committing the foul. See, the mistake made by Baxter was he came out too far to contest, and Thornton literally beat him to the spot. Now, as he gives it up, watch him beat him to the spot. The pick from Archie Miller helped a little bit, but he beats Baxter to the spot. Now, you allow anybody with that type of skill to set up right in front of the hoop in the paint, and you're asking for trouble. Lonnie Baxter made a mental error that time. And the foul actually goes on Danny Miller who came across and reached in. Baxter actually caused most of the contact, but Miller picks up the foul. But nevertheless, the foul was created because of a mistake by Lonnie Baxter and coming out too far to play front. Marticic back into the game. Baxter already has three fouls, as does Miller right now. Thirteen points for Thornton, State by four. And again, the pressure continues to be applied against Steve Blake. NC State recognizes that's where the offense starts. And even though he's a freshman, he's got to play a lot of minutes. He's the only true point guard they've got. Dixon, that one wasn't close. Martisich back to Dixon. Dixon with just six points tonight. Averaging almost 16. Ganey finds Miller open in the corner for three. Well, he may not be shooting in a manner to which Wolfpack fans are accustomed, but you don't leave Archie Miller open, particularly on the baseline from three. Now Dixon out to Morris. He'll try a three. Rebound to the smallest guy on the floor. Miller to Thornton. Over Morris. Rebound in. Shannon foul. 
And a little pushing after the fact as it continues to get physical. We look the mismatch. Justin Ganey trying to block Terrence Morris off the board. He's giving it just about all the effort he can. And on the other end, again, a nice little dish off. Miller steps in much too far on the penetrating dish. And again, you don't leave Archie Miller open. And that foul on Danny Miller is his fourth. And that's why Gary Williams is going to make another change. Lonnie Baxter's back in, so Miller leaves with four. Baxter returns with three. Maryland's a very good team, but they're not a very deep team. The fouls can give them a problem. Triangle one! Triangle one! Maryland now goes to the zone, 3 2 zone. And this zone was actually invented by Billy Hahn on the sidelines during the Maryland State game a couple of years ago when they didn't have an answer for what was happening. Had a couple of guys in foul trouble, went to the zone, it was highly effective, and Maryland's put it in their defensive playbook ever since. Morris the miss, but a good putback by Martisich. The other two things about the zone is Morris at 6'9 is up at the top of it, and North Carolina State's going to have to prove to some teams this year they can stick outside jumpers, and this is one way to find out. And that's a great point, Dan, with, with Terrence Morris out at the top, it's very difficult for point guards not only to shoot over, but to be able to see. There's no direct entry passes. You've got to start hitting the wings. He's a foot taller than Archie Miller. And you see the difficulty Miller would have in any ball movement if he's set up at the top trying to shoot. Ganey gets inside, but it misses the runner. And Ganey just getting back into the play. And he's hurting a little bit. Well, he's had to do an awful lot out here tonight, including we saw a moment ago trying to block out the Terrence Morris's of the world. I think he's tired. And he's taken a number of blows, but this is one of those kinds of games that he's had to do a lot and he's winded. Lonnie Baxter turns and draws the foul on Thornton. And it wouldn't be surprising if Thornton's getting tired. This is about the time of the first half when we started to notice guys like Ron Kelly, Justin Gaines getting tired of the first half of the state. Well, you know, it's a defensive intensity. I mean, you haven't seen a lot of teams play defense with this type of intensity. And when you expend that kind of energy on the defensive end, it starts to show after a period of time. You need to have an awful lot of depth. You need to make the substitutions necessary to keep guys fresh if you expect that intensity to be maintained. First free throw good for Baxter. Thornton's now going to come out of the game after committing the foul. We've got him with four. And that's a big loss for North Carolina State. Although with 7.26 to play, they might just rest in two or three minutes and then try to get him back in. Timeout on the floor, a one-point game. North Carolina State trying to hang on, and Justin Ganey getting some medical attention. There's something about a clear answer to a computer question that makes me want to kiss someone. Introducing Dell for me, a new way to buy and own a computer. It lets you get more out of the latest technology. Choose the system you need. My homepage is my castle. Even create your own personal website. Since you're dealing directly with Dell, it's easy. It's pure economics. An affordable computer means more black shoes. This Dimension desktop featuring an Intel Celeron processor at 433 megahertz and everything you see here is just $899. I wish my computer came with a little cyber geek who lived up here on the roof and just came down whenever I had a question. And Dell for me includes tech support 24-7. Tech support? It's all about putting everything you need in one place. It's all about you. Sitting in front of my computer is just as exciting as those extreme sports. Call to order your Dell Dimension with an Intel Celeron processor. Be direct. Dell. Hoops is hanging out all day long. Hey, you know what I love about the weekends? What? This. First up, the boys from Boston College get it on with Providence. Then, Tubby Ball is back as Ryan Carroll leads TCU against Southwest Missouri State. And later, Keon Dooling drives Missouri in a Big 12 battle with Marcus Pfizer and the Cyclones. Providence Boston College at 1230, TCU Southwest Missouri State at 3, Missouri Iowa State at 5, Saturday on ESPN. With NC State up by one, here's a possible key development. Justin Ganey, who's done just about everything his team needs in the second half to get them back in this game, 
comes down hard. It looks as though he grabs the back of his calf. As I mentioned before, I think that he's suffering from some type of uh, fatigue, and grabbing the back of your calf sometimes means that you're suffering from cramps. We saw him before that half getting some massage there, and he's the guy that State can ill afford to have out for too long. He's the guy that pretty much leads their offense and keys their defense. And Damon Thornton, who injured his left leg earlier, then returned, is now on the bench with four fouls. Damian Wilkins the miss. Baxter with a one-handed rebound as he brings it down, and Maryland can take the lead. You know, not to take anything away from Archie Miller, but he's not the creator off the dribble that Justin Ganey is, and when the offense breaks down, you need that creator. That time, not a very good shot for NC State. In the zone, it might be giving him a problem as well. Dixon by Grundy. Inside, no! But it's still Maryland ball. Dixon got a lot of elevation. And a lot of room to the hoop, too. Considering there have been a lot of free passes given under either basket here tonight. This has been a pretty physical game. And a bump in the grind. Welcome to ACC conference play. Dixon will try it again and get it. Juan Dixon is a tremendous story. Last year came off the bench as sixth man. He was kind of a jump shooting specialist, particularly from three-point range. This year, much more of a slasher. His three's not working, but he's adjusted his game. And you take a look here. Again, he grabs the contact, takes it in as far as he can, gets the contact, and still has a presence of mind to finish. Misses the free throw. Another rebound for Kelly. One-point lead for the Terps. and no Ganey, so who is North Carolina State going to turn to for some offense? Maybe it's Inch. Much better attack of the zone. The ball movement up and down, side to side, makes the zone shift, and Inch finds the seam. There's Baxter. Tries to feed it off to Dixon. Baxter gets it back, and he's just too strong that close. Double figures now, 10 for Baxter. This is the way it's been in the first three nights in the ACC. A close one between Florida State and Wake Forest. Florida State winning, and then Duke beating Virginia in overtime last night. Grundy for three. Well, that time, Terrence Morris kind of out of position. The reason why he's at the top is to prevent those point-blank threes. Grundy the rebound. That basket for Grundy, by the way, providing him with his first points of the second half. Nice feed. Great position for Kelly. Got it back off the knee to Wilkins. And a foul. Call of the bouncing ball. And that's what you give up. You go to a zone to stop the attack, to slow the offensive attack, but what you give up are offensive rebounds. It's Kelly once again tossing it up there, not really going up with authority, but the luck of the bounce. Right off of Baxter's knee and off the shot, there's a foul on the offensive rebound. And Justin Ganey is going to return. If NC State continues the offensive rebound against his zone, Maryland's going to have to come out of it. Because not only is it taking its toll with second chance opportunities, but also creating some foul trouble. Ganey leaving a few minutes ago with what appeared to be a cramp of some kind. Back in the game with State leading by two. Tubbs persists in that three-two. Grundy gets inside and hits. Well, that was a nice job by Grundy to attack the top of the zone. You spread two of the guys out, and you find a little seam and go right down the middle. North Carolina State is off to its best start in terms of record. In 11 years, they're 9-1 right now, looking for number 10. And it was that little reverse dribble by Grundy. He started to go to his right, reverse dribble, and the defender had committed himself. And you take a look at the happiness right there.
Don't forget, there's another great game coming up behind us. Dave Barnett and Bill Raftery are in Champaign to bring you a couple of ranked teams out of the Big Ten, Ohio State and Illinois. And you think we're giving you quality guard play here. That next game, you got some of the best in the nation. Talk about Corey Bradford, you talk about Scooney Penn, but you know, there's another young man, Frank Williams for Illinois, that a lot of people don't know about, so you better check him out. He will make some plays. He'll make some mistakes, but then he'll go make some more plays. He's excited. Brown all the way back into it now with the North Carolina State lead at four. Break inside for Baxter. Scoops it up, nowhere to go. Offensive foul on Grundy. We're notwithstanding the questionable part of this call, because I don't think that was an offensive foul. Grundy makes the mistake, absolutely not an offensive foul, but he makes the mistake of forcing it. Instead of picking it up, waiting till the crowd clears, the clutter clears, he tries to force something. Miller's back in for Maryland, playing with four fouls. Thornton remains on the Wolfpack bench. Dixon on a nice cut and a soft touch from just inside the free throw line. It makes it a two-point game. Nice find by Danny Miller. Had the patience to wait for Dixon to get to the spot that he was supposed to. Wilkins finds Grundy as State gets it across. Kelly to the basket. And you know what? That was the strongest move that Ron Kelly has made tonight, and it paid off for him. He's had ample opportunity going to the basket, but that was the one that seemed to have some determination. 3 of 11 from the floor right now. Seven points on the night. Maryland turns it over again. Under four minutes to play. Grundy. Wilkins. And a foul. This game is going to come down to determination, and here's a strong move by Ron Kelly. Prior to that, anytime he got anywhere close to the hoop, he was kind of flipping it up, tossing it up, not using his strength, the broadness of his shoulders to make room. That time, he went to the basket with authority and got rewarded for it. Wilkins to the line, the foul on Baxter, his fourth, so a couple of trips playing with four, Lonnie Baxter and Danny Miller. Wilkins, as you can see, and as we mentioned, it's not a good free throw shooter. Well, looks awfully smooth there. Damon Thornton returns for North Carolina State. He's had a tremendous game. He's got four fouls. Kelly sits down. Looking wrong with that stroke. State by six. When it comes to traditional luxury, it's anything but more of the same. Introducing the all-new 2000 Bonneville. When supercharged, it's one of the world's most powerful sports sedans. More luxury. More attitude. The all-new 2000 Bonneville by Pontiac. Hey, Michael, John here. I'm hanging out, having a beer. How come you don't come down? Man, I'm doing the same thing as you. Why don't you come over here? I mean, the Miller Lite is ice cold and so smooth. Oh, come on, man. From where I'm sitting, the Miller Lite tastes great. Yeah, but the women are prettier over here. Trust me on this. I find that very hard to believe. And you guys call yourselves detectives. Miller Lite. Taste the true pilsner. You know, we're kind of off duty right now, uh -huh. you know. Hi. 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 Damian Wilkins hits a couple of free throws to extend North Carolina State's lead to six with 3.36 to play in front of a crowd of better than 19,000 here at the Entertainment and Sports Arena in Raleigh. A sellout are very close to it. And coming up next, what figures to be another great game, Ohio State and Illinois. A couple of the ranked teams out of the Big Ten, Dave Barnett and Bill Raftery, are ready to go.
And waiting for us to send it to them. And as Len mentioned, you're going to see some of the best guard play in that conference, and that means in the country. Well, you talk about guard play. Let's not forget about the big men either. Ken Johnson for Ohio State, a great shot blocker. You got Marcus Griffin, a guy who gets up and down the floor, very smooth. I mean, both of these teams are going to be reckoned with down the road. But again, Big Ten battles are going to be just as physical as the game we see here. And you add the element of finesse from the outside. Funny thing about Wilkins, just 46% from the line coming in tonight, 18 for 39. Last year, his last year in high school, he shot 78% from the line, and he sure looks a lot more like the 78% guy here tonight. But sometimes as a free throw shooter, you get off to a bad start, and once again, it's a question of confidence. Miller misses a three, and it's Wolfpack ball. Well, here's a neat situation for Maryland, and they come down. And Terrence Morris doesn't touch the ball. You got to question the judgment. Danny Miller's got to recognize he's got to go to his man first before he can even think about looking for a shot. Morris took over the game in the last few minutes of the first half and the first few minutes of the second half. But as you said, he hasn't gotten many touches lately. Wilkins got it back. 15 on the shot clock, three minutes in the game. Thornton, he knew as soon as he let it go, it wasn't close. Baxter a block. And it's Maryland ball. Big block by Lonnie Baxter. Forget about the fact that he's got a few fouls saddled on him. He had to go and make that play. And he did it well without fouling. So here's the patience right now. Good play set up by Morris. Just him touching it now creates an opportunity for someone. The double team leaves somebody open. And Baxter gets back the block and puts it in. Perfect example. Terrence Morris kicks it back outside. The defense has to close, and they leave Baxter open underneath. Good ball movement by Maryland. A dozen for Lonnie Baxter. The lead down to four. Wilkins in some trouble. Again, finds Grundy. Wilkins plays with the composure. You often talk about a coach's son. Looks like being a player's son has worked in his favor to an obvious extent. Another block by Baxter. Blake to Dixon. It's a two-point game. Lonnie Baxter coming up big, and Ron Kelly just seemed to have forgotten what got him that last basket. That time he just laid the ball in Baxter's face, and Baxter knew exactly what to do with it. Timeout taken by North Carolina State. A minute 58 to play, and all of a sudden, Maryland has cut four of the six points out of this lead. You know, Ron Kelly has done a few things well, but most of the night it's been frustration on the offensive end, and great block by Lonnie Baxter. Blake gets it up quickly. Maryland fills the lane, and that's their game, transition basketball. When they can create turnovers, they're going to take advantage of it. You take a look at Morris right here. We talked about having the patience, but his touches being very important. Just the fact that he had the ball forced the defense to collapse around him, and they never recovered. Excellent ball movement there. Danny Miller does a nice job from the perimeter of finding the inside guys. It's just a quick touch, touch pass, and that's all they need. North Carolina State by two. Timeout's not a factor right now. Fouls are. Maryland in the penalty. And the possession arrow belongs to the Turks. Under two minutes to play. And you had an inkling that uh, Herb Sendick was going to make that change. The opportunities are there. Ron Kelly's not the guy that was able to convert, so he goes with a bit of a smaller lineup with Hinge, Thornton, and Wilkins on the front line. Grundy now with Miller on him, shoots over him. Another offensive rebound. This time it's Thornton. And it couldn't have been a bigger offensive rebound. We mentioned that State needs to hit the offensive glass because they're not a great shooting team. 15 for Thornton. This building is rocking right now, but Dixon will stem the tide with another floater. And on the Maryland end, we talked about support for Terrence Morris. If NC State is going to collapse around him, somebody else has to step up. Gary Williams not thrilled with the call. Dixon charged with a foul. Well, Grundy here on the miss. But Thornton using superior athletic ability and actually forced Terrence Morris a little too far under the basket. Great form and going up with both hands and never bringing it down. How about this? North Carolina State has 19 offensive rebounds tonight. That was one of the factors you talked about before the game that might decide this game. And Maryland no slaps themselves with 13, but those are both some big numbers. 
Final minute. State with the lead and the ball. Well, here's an opportunity right now for them to make sure they get a good look at the basket or that they're going to the basket to try to force a foul. Can't go east-west. Got to go to the home. A foul's called. Is it Blake or is it Baxter? If it's Baxter, he's gone. But I... They gave it to Blake. Just the second on the point guard. Again, Justin Ganey recognizes what needs to be done. As I mentioned, you can't go east-west. And as soon as he turns the corner, he's heading straight for the basket, trying to make something happen. And Ganey, a good free throw shooter on the season, almost 80%, has missed his only attempt tonight. But Pete Gillen is watching this game and saying, same thing has happened to Virginia last night. They should have beaten Duke. Had they hit their free throws, they would have won it in regulation. Well, Ganey's a pretty good free throw shooter, as we mentioned, around 78%, and he's the kind of guy you want on the list. Well, not anymore. Wow. Timeout, Maryland. He hits them both. It's a two-possession game. Well, what Gary Williams is talking about right now, settling his team down a little bit, having them focus on what needs to be done. But, you know, this is not a complicated formula. You look to try to get Terrence Morris the ball, not necessarily to shoot it, but again, to create those opportunities. State's going to be very cognizant of Morris's possession. Once he receives, the defense is going to have to make an adjustment, and that's when Maryland should be able to pick them apart with pretty good ball movement. As you saw, another game coming up here tonight on ESPN2, just minutes away. Ohio State and Illinois from Champaign. Maryland's got the ball down two. They've got one timeout remaining. Maryland is in the penalty. NC State's committed only five fouls here in the second half, and the arrow belongs to the Turks. So foul to give for State. And if I'm State, I certainly would take a look as soon as Maryland seems as though they're making any movement from a passing standpoint to the basket. I put the foul on it. Just to disrupt the offense a little bit, make them try to inbound. I'm surprised that they haven't done it. A clear out for Morris. Backs down Thornton. Jump hook over him. Short. And the foul is on the floor underneath the basket. Again, knowing that Morris was going to receive, that time Thornton played him one on one. There was no adjustment by the NC State defense. That's the sixth team foul as Ganey returns. 20 seconds. Tie game. Miller from Blake. And you know the interesting part about that, we watched shoot around this morning, and NC State went over that play. No timeout, it looks like. They're going to play it. Five seconds. Ganey. Still time. Morris for the win. We'll see you again tomorrow night along about 6 o'clock. For Susie Colber, I'm Charlie Steiner. And I'm Robin Roberts. As he said, we'll see you again tomorrow. College Hoops coming up next. Georgia Tech and Maryland. We'll see you. Hoops Malone will not be seen tonight in order to bring you this special presentation. NCAA basketball on ESPN. 20 years of great memories. Bingo!